I'm Matt Dolman, managing partner of the Dolman Law Group, here for my partner in crime, Stan Guype. Stan? Hey, we're here today uh, to talk a little bit about some some stuff that you're seeing more and more in the media these days. It has to do a little bit with social media. So right now we're seeing 85 lawsuits spread across 30 uh, federal circuits, actually 28 federal circuits. And these are lawsuits against Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, but generally it's against Meta. So Meta owns Facebook and Instagram. And these are known as social media harm lawsuits. And the lawsuits allege that you know social media itself and the platform being Facebook or Instagram have have utilized algorithms to target adolescents to show them the certain images or certain videos or content on a predictable basis, um, which engenders addiction and it causes a, ho a host of problems that we're seeing among adolescents, among that generation. And some of them are body dysmorphia all the way to suicide. And Stan, we're handling a few of these cases in house. And there, right now, you know, as last, I think it was last Thursday, the joint panel of multi district litigation at JPML met in St. Louis. And we're waiting to see where they're going to issue venue. But um, this is uh, probably the latest mass tort project that we're working on as a firm um, that we're seeing that uh, is picking up a lot of steam in the media. And um, do you want to expand on it? Yeah, you know, and I think really to understand where this where this comes from and kind of the base of the harm, you kind of got to back up a little bit, okay? Um, social media sites, they're really just expansions of newspapers, okay? They're publishing news, publishing information in a different way. Back when we had newspapers, newspapers had exclusive control over what would show up in print. You know, people could send you a thousand letters, but you picked which opinion you wanted to print, Okay, so as a newspaper, if you decided you were going to print a picture of a naked woman that had been sent into you, you were on the hook for it because you chose to put it out there, right? Well, come come social media, okay? We start getting into the internet age, and we consume our news and consume our information a little bit different way than we used to. It's not straight from publications. It's not straight from media sources. It's not, you know, ABC, CBS, and these people. You've got sites like Facebook and other social media sites where users are presenting content, just like the opinion section of the old newspaper, okay? In the opinion section, that was user-created content, but it was selected and curated by the newspaper, and not everything got in. Well, that's not, the, that's not the way our stuff works now. And because we're the United States, okay, we've got freedom of speech, and, and there was so much going on. Congress decided they were going to create a law, and it's a, it's a, it's a you know, 230 law that essentially uh, shields social media companies for being on the hook for user-created content that's posted on their site. Okay, This is what's allowed all these social media companies to prosper, to grow, to do all this, because uh, let's say a site like YouTube, okay, they get 100 hours of video uploaded every minute. They can't possibly screen that and do it. It, it changes the experience. So Yeah, so Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act, it shouldn't say formally. I mean, there's a couple of cases right out in the federal circuit and one up in front of the United States Supreme Court. It's going to be heard in uh, November. I think oral arguments are November I think 14th or 15th. 230 forms like a blanket shield for internet companies, for social media companies, for third-party content that is posted on their platform. The way that you know these lawsuits are being formed is that they're we're, we're taking a product liability angle and we're going after the algorithms. The algorithms that are being targeted towards showing the same images, specific content based on upon what the user clicks on. And that is that's the that's the problem. But the issue we have though is, and where this is really um it's kind of a case of first impression. If product liability applies to tangible assets, to tangible items, things you can touch, feel, hold. You can't really hold, touch, feel the internet. And the argument by defense and by these, these large companies, including uh, Meta, is that you know the product liability angle fails on its face based on the fact that this is not tangible. That product liability, um, it does not apply to a non-tangible item, to a non-tangible asset. You know, I think that's kind of an antiquated viewpoint. Um, you know, just like, you know, just like the internet, just like social media, everything is evolving, the newspapers, everything's evolving, our laws have to change uh, along with it. Just like, let, let's say we got a constitutional right to bear arms, okay? That was, uh, you know, that was complete, that was unfettered for a while until we started to develop arms that were so big, we had to limit people's ability to own them. 
Okay, so you got to tweak things based on you know what changes within um, within society. You know, I, I think that is definitely a pre Bitcoin way to view things. You know, we're now purchasing things with money that doesn't exist and is created in this ether nether world, and and the laws need to adapt to cover it. But what you said is exactly right. Is Facebook's not liable because some guy posted a naked picture of himself, okay? You, you can't stop that. The problem is Facebook chooses and funnels content to individual users. There's an algorithm and a method to it. They've spent millions and millions, if not billions of dollars developing this. So what happens is, hey, that guy posts a naked picture. Facebook's not on the hook for it. Why are you funneling that to my kid? You know, why does it show up on my kid's feed? Okay, and that's where the problem is. Why are you selecting this type of content to feed to this user? Yeah, and it's, uh, and the adolescents view things a little bit different than adults. Their brains are not fully developed. And what we're seeing, I mean, the classic example is the teenage girl and body image and seeing the same images that are constantly pushed on Instagram and Facebook as this is what a perfect body should look like. This is what a perfect face should look like. And you're creating... A, what is basically an impossibility. And that's exactly it. And not only do they allow it to get uh, created, when, you, when we're talking about these teenage girls, okay, we're talking the filter world, okay? I, I, they, they look out there, and if you, if you look out there and look out, there are, no, there are no imperfect skin, okay? There are no blemishes on Facebook or TikTok. There, the, there is no pimple filter that th- makes people look normal. Everything that goes out there makes people look abnormally beautiful. These sort of, uh, and these filters are created by the companies to do this to these pictures. Well, so as all these girls watch it and as they grow up, your reality is what you're seeing is where you're spending your time, and all they see is everyone else is perfect, Okay, everyone else is doing great. Everyone else, not me. Okay, why can't I have that? And it hurts, you know, and it's a psychological harm. And which, fine, if it happens by chance, that's one thing. But if you're creating this with algorithms and feeding this information in such a way that it tends to cause a psychological harm to minors, you got to be careful. Okay, you need to tailor your algorithms so that these things don't happen. So the argument again is from the plaintiff side. You know, if you're using a product liability angle and targeting the algorithms, it's failure to warn, design defect, and a failure to warn is to adequately protect minors, that there's a proper failure to actually, you know, state that this is a dangerous product, that if I use in its intended purposes, it's going to provide specific images, specific doctored sequences of content that could be very dangerous for adolescents. Yeah, and and don't think that when you when people look at this, I don't want this to be one of those things where they go, oh damn, these attorneys, they're at it again. You know, they're they're trying to take down anyone they can. These companies are purposely making billions of dollars targeting and addicting users. Okay. There there are social media companies that have modeled their platform after slot machines, okay, to mm-hmm. get that let's same. Talk, let's addic- talk about how it affects the dopamine receptors. Okay, let's talk like TikTok. Okay, there's been allegations out there that TikTok models it models is after a slot machine. Okay, that it's the exact same thing. TikTok knows what its viewers like. They know what videos are gonna really kind of excite you, really gonna make you like it, but they don't feed those to you in a stream. They feed you three, four, or five videos you're not gonna like, kinda okay, and then one you're really gonna like. That's the slot that hits. Okay, and it's the same dopamine response. You get that little hit of dopamine when you get that good video, then you go spin, 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 good video. Oh, great, great, great. Spin, 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 good video. Just like that 70 year old woman at the slot machine. Your kid is just as tied to that TikTok thing as that lady in the slot. I mean, it is identical. When you try to pull your kid off of TikTok, he's just a couple more spins. It's like the lady who's addicted to the slot machine has the same psychological effect. 100%. And there's internal documents from uh, Facebook showing that they know this. They knew this many years in advance. This is their intended purpose. They were targeting adolescents. They knew of the harm. There are studies showing this. And this was actually leaked uh, through two different whistleblowers. This came out in 2015 that they knew of the danger. They knew of the harm that this uh, posed towards young women, young girls, and it, uh, especially body image by dysmorphia. The risk that, it, it sh- it, that the overall use of the platform posed to young women. 
we already know this is a susceptible element of society. Okay, go you know, pre-social media. You know, that's that age where people go through changes, your hormones are changing, your thought processes are changing, and people struggle to kind of get back on plane as an adult. You're, you're going through a lot, of, almost like a metamorphosis. The social media companies have gotten to a point where they have get taken a role in that metamorphosis, and it's a psychological, mental impact they're having on these ch- kids as they age. And, and, and it is. It's, it's true. You know, it is. How many kids do anything without taking a picture of it, without sending it so everyone else can see how great it is? OK. Well, when was the you last time you saw a group of kids that are not all staring at their phone? They'll be together. You know, yes. when you're younger and you're with your friends. You're not sitting there staring at a phone. That wasn't that wasn't our generation. It wasn't available to us. But now if you go out, you go out with your wife for dinner and you see a group of kids out there, you know, you're walking through the mall, near a restaurant. They're all staring at their phone. They could all be together. It could be seven of them. But they're staring at their phone. I mean, social media addiction is real. Well, it, it's real. And also the, the part of it I, I, I think that we kind of over – look is nobody's taking a picture of the bad stuff, okay? Nobody takes a picture of the, the something they messed up, okay? Nobody's taking a picture of the goal they missed and posting it. Everyone's taking a picture of what they did that was special, and it creates an unsort of healthy and unnatural perception that this is all that's out there in life. And that's the way these kids operate. They post it. And Facebook, while not responsible for the fact that they post it, perpetuates this image. Okay. And like my son, your son, let's face it, Matt, our kids are somewhat privileged within the whole overall spe- scope of society. They have access to, to more funds, more ability to do things than a lot of families do. So my kid can look out there and, and he doesn't look at it necessarily the same as net all kids. He's got his own issues out there. He, but, you know, think about it with kids who don't have those same opportunities and all they see is other people out there. Other people are doing perfect stuff, you know, front row at the 50-yard line, football, all this stuff, and it and it seems like real life. And what they're comparing themselves to is no longer real life. What they compare themselves to is this false notion of real life that's presented by the social media companies, and then that's not reality. And then they go, I don't measure up. I'm not measuring up. I'm not there. It's a depression. Okay, which leads to a lack of self-confidence, a lack of self-motivation, and you don't get there. You know, it it, it makes your kids think we're already behind. Could have said it better myself. So if if you're listening to this and you have a child um, that's uh, exhibits self-harm, depression, social media addiction, um, body dysmorphia, eating disorders, insomnia, we'd like to talk to you. We want to go over... What are the issues that your child is facing? What platform are they using? And these are these are cases that are being filed right now in federal court throughout the country. Um, we're handling a couple ourselves, and we've been investigating these cases for the last six months. And this is a this is a mass tort product that's about to take off. We're waiting for the joint panel of multi district litigation to determine where venue will be held. Uh, these are cases that need to be filed in federal court, so you're not going to see a state court docket. But um, We'd love to talk to you. So if you're experiencing any of these issues, if your uh, child is having any kind of problems at all based on their social media use, we're available. You hit on something that I wanted to bring up that's kind of unique to this when you were talking about the social media platforms. Most of these kids, like, like they're not on just Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. They're on all of them. Right. So it's it, a lot of times when it gets really complex because it's hard for us to point and say, hey, it's just Snapchat. It's just TikTok. It's just Facebook because they're doing they're in all of these social media platforms and the harms somewhat overlap. So you're going to see some of these cases where you got joint defendants that are mutually responsible for the harms of these kids. So just because you're seeing your kid and on one social media platform doesn't mean that the others might not be contributing to what's going on. So if you if you feel like you need to limit something like, hey, it's just I need to limit Snapchat, I need to limit Facebook. No, you kind of need to limit everything because it all overlaps and interplays. If you're facing these issues, you want to reach out to us, um, drop me a line, Matt, M-A-T-T at dolmanlaw.com, D-O-L-M-A-N-L-A-W.com. Our website's dolmanlaw.com. It's a robust website full of uh, significant resources. We're happy to talk to you anytime. 833-55-CRASH is the the, uh, phone number for the firm. 24-7, we're available for you. 
I wish you a great day. Yeah, great day, guys. Thanks for listening.